Right everyone, in this vlog we're going to be doing a Q&A session. We put a few um, posts out on the community tab last week asking people to submit questions. So let's just crack on and get on with it because there's quite a few to get through. The first one comes from Mark, uses the username 1968Concord. And as he's asked, what do you think of the latest wagons and prices? Uh, we do buy newer wagons, but we tend to get them at toy fairs and stuff. So they're usually discounted. Obviously, yeah. they are expensive compared to the old stuff. You know, what isn't? However, there is much more detail on. And when you take into account, you know, inflation, whatnot, they're not that much more expensive. However, they do seem it. You know, when you're paying £20 for a wagon, it is a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I suppose it depends where you are within your train journey, isn't it? You know, train journey. That's that's a good pun, isn't it? I like that. Did you rehearse that? <laughs> right. Just need the cat coming to cause chaos. Yeah, they are expensive. Some much more than others. You know, some of the some of the larger wagons you're looking at. You know, way more than twenty five pound. I think some are like. 40. Really? They are big. And to make up a full train of those sort of wagons, you're looking at a few hundred pound. And it depends what you want, though, doesn't it? If you want some of the same, you know, if you want different ones, you know. I love the novelty ones, as you know. So it's it depends what you want on your... Yeah, a lot of people love the novelty wagons, even though, you know, the serious models, because they're a lot of fun. He's also asked... Um, well, they said that Mainline and Airfix were making quite good wagons in the late 70s. And Airfix started with the narrow coupling, which is similar to what's available now. And obviously that is something, you know, most modelers were of back in... I think Airfix came to market 76, 77. And the couplings were... Well, we've got one here, so let's have a look. That's the... Well, they did change it because a lot of people complained it didn't work right. So which one have we got here? Uh... This is the later one they changed it to. We have got another one somewhere. So this is the one they change it to later on, which is quite a, a bit wide of what they had to start off with, which is very similar to, you pass me that third green one along. Airfix started out with something, you know, very similar to that, which is way narrower. I think the best couplings are the mainline ones because these on some of them tend to droop and don't connect that well but it's a, it's a lovely wagon but um yeah so then the change to this which was somewhere in between the hornby and the, the original one it does look quite wide though doesn't it well Not, is it supposed to it just so it's more compatible with hornby which were the most you know popular coupling type at the time there were just more of them around right so I don't know if people have problems coupling them together. I, I never have. But the, the compromise and went ahead with that one. All right, let's get on to the next question. I don't really rate Lima at all. This is from Gordon Hanning. What are your thoughts on the Lima brand? My first train set was a Lima one. I had a Lima shunter and I think it was a J72 LNER tank engine. And um, that came with Lima wagons and they were very cheap looking, but it was a very, they were cheaper than Hornby back in the day. And over time, the Lima models, whilst not improving massively, the gap between Lima and Backman when they came to market narrowed. Obviously, Backman were a far better model, which really didn't help Lima. But at the peak in the early 80s, mid 80s, they were a really, really um, competitive model. And because they did, um, one of Lima's strengths was they could do low production runs of, you know, 500 locos a show, which Hornby couldn't. So they offered more variety in the range. They did a lot of commission for model shops and things. So that's one reason why the, the values have remained quite high is because there's the actual rarity of certain models. So I like them. And I do think the, what people call the pancake motors in them were better than the Hornby Ringfield ones, in my experience. Question for you both from Tim Maslin. Can, can you find bargains on the latest eras and latest release stuff? Secondly, have you bought items, got them home and wish you hadn't? You can find bargains. There's, um, you know, just, just rummaging around the fairs and stuff like that. You will find the newer stuff and a lot of the newer eras and 
you know the hard disk and it even says in the box you know reduce from such to such especially some of the show specials they can have up to 20 percent off on some so bargains are there but what you tend to find is a lot more people looking for the newest stuff and the later models so they're quite they are a bit harder to find and they they don't stick around but that's what i found anyway have you anything to add on that no, I, I, I glaze over it Tad. i'm sorry i don't really know enough about it all. Right, yo. Question for both of you to answer separately. Oh. This is from Jason at Barnabas Junction. Hello, Jason. Hi. Your most favourite exhibition ever visited? This is a real tough one because they're all they're all unique. Even yeah. if you get the same layouts there, there's different people there. They're, they're, they're just yeah. Di you know, in a different frame of mind. You know, the days can be going completely different when you. You get to somewhere, how far you've travelled, things like that. How busy they are, how big the venue is. They all, they're all unique. We've never been to an exhibition and thought, you know, that was rubbish, have we? No. 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 I can honestly say we, we've never thought that. You've got to take into account the, you know, the entry fee, you know, things like that, and who you meet there. There's a couple that stick in my mind. Obviously, Lee was a great one. That was a big one. We were there all day. Yeah, that was a long day, though. That makes it hard, but it was a good... Yeah, it actually felt like a day's work, believe it or not, which is um, it's quite unusual because um, we're concentrating more on trying to get everything filmed in time. Um, we did three videos for that and we struggled to get them all in. I was like a dog struggling to get in here now. Another one that um, springs to mind is uh, Liverpool. That was a really nice one. There was a cat there running around, which is always good. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Thirsk was another favourite of mine. Yeah, I like being able to look over on the mezzanine level and yeah, that was good. Yeah. That was um, that was really that was enjoyable. Good, yeah, Blackpool was good, apart from the dodgy light, which um, spoiled our video. <laughs> hey Bob, there's um, some of the footage you couldn't even use, which is really annoying because one of them was one of the best railways I've ever seen. I will um, try oh, and get that out. Railway. It was one of the best model railways I've ever seen. That one, it was absolutely fantastic. I did mean to not put it in the main video. So yeah. it looks compromised and just use it as bonus footage in one of the vlogs. So I'll try and get that out in another, obviously, that explain. Because it does just spoil, would have spoiled the whole video. But to see in isolation, it'd work a bit better. Another one from Jason. If having available funds were not an issue, what scale gauge would you model and why? That's the same. I like double mm -hmm. O. It's, it's somewhere in between O and N, literally. And it's, you know, you can get a lot into a pretty small space. But obviously, if we had a... Massive funds. We'd probably have a real life railway, wouldn't we? Oh, garden yeah. one. Garden one. There you go. Right. Next question from Colin Porter. If you do visits to toys and train fairs exhibitions at Elsica, have you ever thought about visiting the Garden Railway Show? We have, but that's on in September, and we're usually on holiday in September. Otherwise, we would have gone. Uh -huh. Question for Pauline from Gordon McElroy. What was your favourite purchase this year and what made it special? It's there. <laughs> Well, it is train related, isn't it? But... Yes, it is part of a train, yeah. <laughs> oh, it used to be. I like it. I think it's great. It'd be interesting to know what, what it's an airfix kit or something that. Like. Yeah, this is what I like. It's just quick. I love things that are a little bit different. Um, you know, when you're looking at these things, it's nice to find something that I just, I like the way they do them and I, I love going to them. Sitting in there and tea and cake in these a lot well, of you these could places. um you could make one of them if I found you a suitable carriage and all the bits. You could actually make one of them as your next kit. <laughs> next question for Bobby. Why are you so cute? Oh some, somebody called I Don't DT. know what that is. Don't know why that is. It's because he's so gorgeous boy, aren't you? Gorgeous boy. There's another one from Jason at Barnabas Junction. What are your thoughts on the future of model railways? It's a mm. tough one. I think you've got to get the kids involved. They've got to be able to enjoy... The Ford. Yes. And I think that's where a lot of the older ones come in. You know, the bargains. You know, because otherwise it's just so expensive. We were speaking mm. to somebody only the other day. Yeah. And she bought the son a layout and he got a few bits and pieces while he was there. Because it's mm. just well, got to be... Well, kids destructive. I remember when I was a nipper and I had my railway. Most of it got broke. And they were pretty basic models. If I'd got something like this, which is just the modern equivalent, you know, it's 
it's still aimed at the same people. The old stuff was still aimed at the adults as well as the kids. Mm -hmm. These wouldn't last two minutes. So, yeah, even the railroad stuff is um, expensive. I think you just have to see how much the kid really wants it, buy him a star ticket, let him mm -hmm. play with it, and if they carry on playing with it, then they'll want the stuff. You know, They'll tell you if they want it. You, know, you can't encourage children to be interested in something because they tend to rebel against whichever way you push them so <laughs> yeah. they've just got to discover it for themselves and we see loads of kids at exhibitions and they absolutely love it obviously okay. thomas yeah. is a is a big help <laughs> yeah. but the thomas models are, are expensive yes yes but exactly. yeah just just get him a second hand starter set and see what happens there's no point spending a fortune if they're not going to like it hmm. and if they don't the dad will like it so which is your all-time favourite manufacturer from past to present? I'd have to say it's Wren, because I love Wren as a kid. I had one Wren logo. Sorry, two. Two R1 shunters, a red one and a, a black one. And they were some of my favourite logos. They weren't massively detailed. I just don't, they just ran quite nice, and they, um, they had a bit of character. So when I got a bit of enough money to buy, I did ask my mum for a Wren Pacific when I was a kid, but obviously I didn't know how much they were. And the answer was no. So as soon as I got back into railways, one of the first things I bought was um, City of London Pacific, and that is still probably my favourite loco. Okay. So, yeah, I'd have to say Wren. I'm going to be doing a lot more on Wren videos, which we can't go into too much detail yet because there's a lot involved. But we'll, be, we'll do a running session with some Wren stuff. We actually might have some new stuff to show you on the Wren. Have you guys got Paul in a cute shunter yet? No. 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 Well, that last question, sorry, was from the model shed. Thank you. Robert Powell, have we got Paul in Q Shunter? No. Um, yeah, we'll, um, we'll get one. Just try, there's so many out there. And, um, mm. Dinmore Junction, are you attending the Wally NEC events at the end of November? We've no plans to. And um, I, it's doubtful, isn't it? I, I wouldn't want to go and film a video at something like, you know, Wally or one of those massive shows. It'd just be, we just... Um, well, it's just so busy, isn't it? It's very yeah. difficult to get to things. You, you, you find for views at the best of times. I mean, the, you, somebody you know? mentioned that there'd be other YouTubers there. Well, there's other YouTubers where we go. You know, we'd be happy to meet them. It's, it's, it's not, that's not no, what, that not wouldn't put us off. We'd, we'd just do what we want, basically. And if we did go to one of these massive ones, I think we'd probably just film the bargains. And the stands, to be honest with you, um, because there'd be so much to see and a lot of traders we've never met before. So I think we'd do that, maybe film one or two of our favourite layouts, but we certainly wouldn't go around and film the whole thing. Dragon Junction, do you have any plans for a home model railway? Yes, we do. Um, yes. It's here now. We've not made much progress in the last week or so. <laughs> it's just got rubbish piled on it at the moment. But um, yeah. We've, you've been doing some more kits, so there's more to come on that. Would you like to visit other YouTubers' layouts? Yes, please. Yeah, because you've got to think about these things. We're all proud of what we do, and often you don't see other people, unless they're other YouTubers or, you know, mm. friends, family, that sort of thing. But it, it's lovely to see, and people like to show what they've done. Yeah, we still yeah. obviously see the things at the exhibitions, and these people will have other layouts at home. So, yeah, if, if you want us to... Pop around your graph, have a few pints, have a look at your layout. <laughs> Not a problem. We'll, we'll even bring our own biscuits. <laughs> what type of layout would you like to build? Well, it's sort of going to be a, a heritage-inspired railway. What do you think of model railway clubs? Well, we've actually joined one. We have. Mm, it cost us a pound, didn't it? It did. Got something in my eye. Um, <laughs> yeah, we joined... Uh, what was it called? Is it a... New Mill. New Mills Model Railway Society. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we went to their um, mini show, the, the big ones in February. Um, great bunch of people, and we, we joined. They meet in a pub. Win win, is that it? It's a really nice pub. Uh, but yeah, model railway clubs are great, actually. You know, at the end of the day, they're just a bunch of um, you know people with a similar interest. There'll be all different sort of characters in there with a similar interest, and they have plenty to talk about and get ideas off each other and, and create some great railways. So, yeah, any, any, any sort of clubs, clubs are, um, you know, good um, to get people, you know... We just don't have many nearby, do we? No, there was one where we lived, but it's gone now. Are you into steam or diesels? So it's the same questions from Jagan Junction. 
I'm more into diesels, but when I did a count up, I've actually got more steam locos. <laughs> I think I prefer the steam. You it's definitely not prefer the steam, and because um, I grew up with diesels, so that's that's where the the, the interest off, started for yeah. me. You know, steam wasn't in use when I was a nipper. You'd see them occasionally on the main line. Um, Duchess of Hamilton is one of the ones I remember, but um, I well, like both. Rick, this is from Matt Chivers Workshop. Rick, you have a wealth of knowledge. I do. And detail when it comes to the older brands. That's because I'm old. Like mainline, Airfix, Hornby. Where and how did you acquire all this fascinating information? Um, I've always been into history and the history of model railways. Well, not everybody's cup of tea. I just find it fascinating how all the different brands made their own things and competed with each other and took each other over and some disappeared and they came back. So, yeah. Basically, the, the trains I was interested in as a kid, but I knew nothing about because there's no internet then. So I've got a few reference books. I've done a bit of looking online. And when something somebody poses a question about something and I can't get to the bottom of it, I like, I like having a, a good nose around trying to find the info. Mm. And useless information, like most chaps, <laughs> has a special place in my head. <laughs> you know, us blokes, we've always got a little space in there for completely useless information. Whether it be about cars, music, <laughs> it's a it's a male thing that isn't it? I know a lot of you know ladies and that are into model railways, but they don't seem to have this fascination with useless information. They're um, they're much more interesting, aren't they? And <laughs> yeah, it's just it's a bloke thing, really, isn't it? Matt will understand. Pauline, what is your favourite purchase that you've bought? I think you're going back to that again, aren't you? Is anything else that but the polo wagon? I know you like the polo wagon. I do. I do. I think... Are you going to show it? Sorry. Can't You've show seen it same. so many times, though. That's the thing. Um, just once. I think it's just... We might have a new viewer. Hi. Oh. That's the new viewer. Just the one. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, any more questions? If you can find the stock cheaply, would you dip into another gauge like O? Not really, no. It's just not practical. Um, Who's that? This is Numpty Pootis. We met him down at Great Eastern Models. He was chatting oh. to us about his O-gauge. What region's my favourite? In Steam, it would have been LMS. Other than the Trix A4, what other models do you have that you consider are not so good? I do a separate video on that. Have you got others, then, that you feel...? Um, not as bad as that one, no. <laughs> I've got a few that need work on, but they are, you know, they're all... Yeah, the Trix is a good model. Um, a lot of people have said, you know, why, why do you like it? You know, they are good. Then I've had a few other people say um, they're all rubbish. So I think it's just the price I paid, which was upwards of 50. I think I mentioned it was 60. I'm, I'm not sure, but it, it, I just don't think it's ever going to be brilliant. So, yeah, that one is... Um, I'm getting upset thinking about it. <laughs> right, this is Fox Hill Railway. Question A is, Simba wants to know, Simba is um, Neil's dog. Simba wants to know how Bobby is. He's very well, Simba. Yes, yes. Chilling nicely on my lap. Yeah, very easy going. Barks a lot, but um, yeah. that, that's just his breed. Ooh, why don't you like Lima wagons, Rick? I have a couple of Lima wagons. I just, what it is, they have these massive couplings on which you can get away with on a loco, but when you see them on a small wagon, I just, just don't like them. And the, the quality of the plastic doesn't look the best. Is that? No, that's an um, Airfix. Oh, right. We've got two. Um, Have you got one to show then? No, that's mainly no. so massive. Um, well, it's the same as on this, this diesel here. Look at this Western, the same as on that. When you have that coupling on a small wagon, it's just huge, like a garden gate. So this Western is absolutely fantastic runner, by the way. Uh, what lean is not your favourite? The Locos are great. And I've got quite a few. I, I, if I see any more, you know, the right ones, I will buy them because they do some really good liveries. But um, the Western is, is one of my favourites, that one. It just runs so nice. It actually makes a nice noise. And so where did we meet? Well, when Pauline's friends asked where we met, and to embarrass Pauline, I said we met dogging. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. We didn't even have a dog when we met, did we? No. 
Bobby was a present. <laughs> no, we actually met on a dating site, funnily enough. Um, yep. We went for a date and we spent all day together and we've never looked back since. So um, thanks for that question, mid Sussex <laughs> Railway. And I think we'll leave it there. Any other questions, we might do one another of these in a few months. Cheers. Bye.